Good afternoon. I'm Vicki Wessling with City Speaks. City Speaks is for the residents, for the city of Dunkirk, and for all of North County because today we have our county executive, George Barillo, here with us. City Speaks is for you. It's the vision of Mayor Rosas. Please let us know what you think, what you like, what you don't like, who you want to see, who you don't want to see again. Send an email, vwessling at cityofdunkirk.com. Call me direct, 363-6888. Or send snail mail to Vicki Westling, City Hall, 342 Central Avenue, Dunkirk. And with that, welcome our County Executive, George Barillo. We are so pleased to have you here. Thank you, Vicki. It's great to be here. You know, there's so much going on in our county, and our, especially in the North County. And then, of course, you've got the South County, too. But in the North County, which is what we tend to focus on more, mm -hmm. uh, there are things happening. And as I go through, uh, whether it's the, the read the papers or watch the news, you are everywhere. I mean, I think you even have a hashtag, you know, where is George or something. <laughs> yes. <So. laughs> hashtag where is George B. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so, so that's great. Tell me a little bit. One of the more interesting things that has come out uh, of recent is this $1.2 million uh, grant mm -hmm. that the county received from the state to deal with our water and our wastewater uh, cooperative. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that and how did that come about? Well, you know, it's really kind of exciting because, um, you know, rewind now uh, back to when I was still a county legislator uh, and we um, became part of the Municipal Consolidation and Efficiency Competition, a statewide competition, uh, and we became one of six finalists throughout New York State for a $20 million grand prize. And we submitted 14 collaborative projects um, that worked um, with a lot of consolidation issues and a lot of you know, government efficiency issues, including this one. And although we didn't win that $20 million uh, prize, uh, we had these 14 projects that I like to, uh, in tongue-in-cheek, say were shovel-ready uh, in the sense that they were projects that we had, you know, put together uh, and, and presented that are now ready to be shopped, so to speak, for funding through other agencies. And this idea of creating a water-wastewater cooperative throughout the county uh, is the first one to be funded uh, through a Department of State. Uh, and uh, what this is, is it's going to give us, uh, there's, a, there's a severe shortage of qualified uh, workers uh, for water and wastewater treatment plants, people that have the certification. Uh, in fact, there are places uh, like Fredonia, for example, where uh, you know, they have, you have people that cannot retire because they cannot find licensed people to replace them. And this is the case, this is a, this is a nationwide issue. So the, this cooperative will allow several uh, water and wastewater uh, organizations uh, in, in throughout the county to work together and to be able to share supervisors, to, to be able to um, share other employees, to work together collaboratively and, and save money by doing bulk purchasing of supplies and testing. So uh, this is going to, not only is it going to save money, it's going to solve a problem when it comes to having qualified workers uh, that, uh, that that all wastewater and water treatment plants throughout uh, the area need. So I'm very excited about this. It's a, a collaborative effort that involved several municipal, municipal uh, water and wastewater treatment facilities that I think is going to uh, really be a game changer. And we're only the second county in New York State that has pursued uh, a, a project like this. So I'm, I'm very excited that we're on the, the, the cutting edge of this. Well, you know, and one of the things was that the, w along with this, uh, the city was involved. Mm -hmm. yes. And part of the original proposal was to work with Fredonia on, uh, on saving the cost of the services to our wastewater treatment plant yes. and how we handle our, our sludge processing, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Will that be a part of this project? So this is, um, that, th that's uh, going to be somewhat a part of it. Um, there is a whole separate um, uh, initiative, the project that we put together that specifically speaks on how we can have Dunkirk and Fredonia work together, uh, in the, specifically in their wastewater treatment plants. Um, there's, as you probably know, they're very, very close to each other. <laughs> they're less than a mile or, uh, down the road right. from each other. Uh, and, um, well, sometimes that mile is, is more like a thousand. Yeah, it's, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and that's where um, there's a lot of uh, potential synergy between those two. Uh, right now, the, the, the city of Dunkirk's wastewater treatment plant, the sludge, as you mentioned, uh, has to be treated, uh, it has to be, uh, and then trucked down to the landfill. Uh, and there's a number of issues with that, including the cost. Uh, last I knew, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars a year yes. that's spent on that. Uh, meanwhile, Fredonia has the ability to actually take the sludge and uh, dry it. They have a, a facility there that could be expanded. 
Uh, so now instead of uh, having to treat it, which is expensive, and having a tr to truck it all the way down to the landfill, which is quite a distance, it can be moved in, you know, in smaller quantities more frequently just down the road. Uh, and that's just one of the many potential synergies. So now, do you think that's going to happen? Am I, are we working toward that end? Yeah, because it, that would be wonderful, uh, especially yeah. given the economic conditions uh, that are going on. Certainly, you know, we're going to talk about the uh, NRG plant, mm -hmm. but certainly with economic conditions, if the city could save, you know, uh, two, three hundred thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. by working with Fredonia mm -hmm. uh, to dry and then reuse that that sludge, uh, mm -hmm. that would be great. So if that's a part of this project, good job. Yeah. Well, you know, and again, I, we're, we're, we want to create a whole uh, separate project on that, but um, the other um, uh, potential savings involved in this cooperative is going to also save the city money and, and, and of course all the other municipalities involved. Um, but to go back to your question on that specific project, uh, because of the MCEC application, we now are shopping that one as well. Uh, because the um, the whole back at this moment is the initial startup costs in being able to uh, uh, ramp up the facility in, in Fredonia and also do some other things to create uh, uh, the ability for them to be able to seamlessly uh, work together. So I'm excited about that one too. I've never been so excited about sludge in my life, but, but uh, I'm excited about that one and I think we're going to, uh, we'll also advance that one along with a lot of other projects uh, that we had put together and prepared for that grant application. That, that is good. That's really good news, and I know that the mayor will be happy to hear about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, another uh, thing that we want to talk about is the CSX rail system. Now, mm -hmm. I know that we talk about things that are, are you know, uh, mortar issues and, you know, and roads and highways, but aesthetics are, are important, too, and certainly, you know, tourism is important, and you've met with the CSX uh, railroad people. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor was a part of a meeting with them. Yeah. I believe that we had our senator and assemblyman, all these people were together trying to get CSX to come in, look at the bridges, look at their overpasses, mm -hmm. clean them up, and make them certainly more uh, efficient, more functional, mm -hmm. but certainly more aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what's going on there. Sure. Well, we had a meeting a few months ago, um, and it involved all the North County municipalities that are that are impacted by the railroad. Uh, it was CSX and Norfolk Southern. Uh, some of their top executives were here. In fact, right at the uh, Fredonia Technology Incubator here in Dunkirk. Right. Um, and um, it was a very productive meeting. It was an open forum where uh, you had um, mayors, supervisors, uh, highway superintendents, um, being able to ask questions. The biggest issue is communication, and the railroads admit that they're not good at communicating uh, and uh, this all sprung out of the uh, the rail cars that sat for months uh, yes. uh, on the overpasses right there in, in, right in downtown and um, you know I worked with the mayor and we were able to get those rail cars moved finally right before the boat race <laughs> as a matter of fact uh, because again we're you know in a, in a summer tourism economy the last thing you want is these eyesores sitting in the middle of the city um, so uh, that was a, um, a small victory, we'll call it, but it also led to a, uh, this meeting that we had at the incubator and to talk about how can we have better communication. And that's, that meeting is already starting to bear some fruit. We are having uh, some additional and better communication. But to speak specifically on the bridges and overpasses, um, you know, of course, they have literally thousands of them across the country. And their resources are limited as well as what they tell us. Um, but what they, they do have um, is they have a program uh, where they will work with local governments, local organizations, uh, and they will, uh, in some cases, like for in Norfolk Southern, for example, would supply the paint, uh, and then uh, if we supply the labor. So uh, I've been talking, you know, obviously we've got winter now here, but I've been talking about can we create a, uh, a regional effort here in the North County uh, to address those bridges and overpasses and we can share services with the city and other municipalities throughout the North County to provide the labor mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but more importantly we need to have permission you know there's very strict regulations right. you know those are um, obviously there's safety issues many safety issues involved uh, and uh, we, so it requires following that that um, chain of command with the railroads and, and with the Federal Railroad Administration <clears throat> but if, if we can 
get that together in a collaborative effort, we can start, you know, beautifying these bridges. And right. I remember when I was a kid, um, you know, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, there was a concerted effort to actually decorate those. They had, you know, uh, local artists that, that, that painted the over bridges and overpasses. And mm -hmm. so I'm hoping that, you know, it may not be to that extent, but if we can just get them uh, to at least uh, uh, be cleaned up and, uh, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of paint, a little bit of, uh, right. you know, yeah. and it would, would go a long way aesthetically for sure. Ab absolutely and we certainly need that because we had we had a, a big push for that especially during the boat race as yes. you mentioned it was really something. The other thing when we talk about railroads we've had uh, several people come to our council meetings we've had people write letters they're really looking at bringing uh, passenger rail service mm -hmm. back to Dunkirk mm -hmm. um, or, and to this area. Is there any news on that? You know, we've had some conversations uh, with with CSX uh, because they have the track, even though it's Amtrak mm -hmm. that actually runs it. It's 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 CSX uh, that is the, um, the the challenge when it comes to that. Um, you know, they're they're more than happy to allow Amtrak to have a stop, but the infrastructure you'd have to create right. to have that stop here would would uh, is not something that that uh, Amtrak or CSX uh, w you know, wants to bear the cost of. So then it comes down to um, can we find uh, largely, it will be federal support for something like this. Um, and right now, it's um, there's a there's no real pots of money to to dig into to do that. But um, I do think having rail service, uh, passenger rail service uh, here, having a stop here in in, in Dunkirk, uh, w would be something that would be beneficial. Um, I know that uh, people that go by rail to New York City and Chicago, you know, taking that drive in to Depew or downtown right. Buffalo, got awful early in the morning, is yes. uh, is, is is a challenge. Uh, also, I think that, that um, having a stop here would also help uh, our tourism here, uh, sure. you know, bringing well, people down. Well, and of down. course the university. Yeah. There's, you know, I mean, if you yeah. think about it, you know, we have a lot of students who come in from various areas, and mm -hmm. if we had the rail service here where they could commute back and forth if they needed to or the parents could come in, that would be a, a really good thing. So yeah, absolutely. that's so, something that we'd really like to look at. Yeah, and, and we'll continue to to try and see if there's opportunities to do that uh, because I think that uh, ultimately it's, the, the cost of the infrastructure is the issue. Uh, I think Amtrak and CSX would be cooperative, um, you know, from a standpoint of allowing it to happen. You just have to find funding to make it happen. Okay. We talk about shared services, and I know that's a really uh, big thing on your list. I know yes. you were instrumental, uh, and really, I think you probably worked behind the scenes more than you did in, the, in front with the uh, for Forestville situation. Mm -hmm. um, we have so many little towns and villages mm -hmm. and burgs and school districts in our county. Mm -hmm. And the more of these little things, you know, our tax burdens become just astronomical in mm -hmm. some cases. What are you looking at in the way? Uh, are you considering any kind of consolidation, any more consolidation efforts? Well, ultimately, you know, the the county's role is to you know, to help guide people through the process. Uh, and I can tell you right now that there are a couple of municipalities that are considering, you know, consolidations and dissolutions. Um, we did things differently, uh, starting with Forestville. Um, I was chairman of the. Uh, of the of the task force that worked on the the Forestville uh, consolidation with the town of Hanover, I was also involved in Cherry Creek uh, as well. And when I was chairman of the um, Regional Solutions Commission, uh, you know, under our previous county executive, uh, and what we did differently was we got, made sure we got good information from an impartial third party source to the voters, because ultimately it's up to the voters to decide if they want to, you know, dissolve a government, merge governments. Uh, and it's a challenging thing because there's always um, the misinformation campaign that's out there. Uh, but the reality is, is that we have too many layers of government in Chautauqua County. And this is true of most upstate counties, but particularly here in Chautauqua County for barely 130,000 people, we have right now, after the dissolution of Forestville and Cherry Creek, we still have 41 municipal governments in our county. Uh, and that doesn't include all of the water districts and sewer districts and lighting districts and everything else. That doesn't include school districts, which we have far too many of as well. Uh, and we have over 500 elected officials in our county, uh, most of which run unopposed. And in some cases, you can't get people to run at all. So we really need to address this issue uh, because it, it is costly. It is inefficient. 
Uh, and ultimately, if we want to grow our communities, we want to and we want to continue to bring people back here, and we want to attract uh, new businesses and help businesses grow, having too many layers of government creates um, an unpredictable level of risk for business. Right. Uh, you know, you have to go through a seven-layer cake to right. get something approved. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and, and really, that's what what uh, people I think don't understand in some ways is that. Um, as a business person myself, um, you know, businesses are willing to take risk, but they don't want to take unpredictable risk. They want to take right. calculated risks. And when you have to go through the state and the county and the IDA and the town and the village and the zoning right. board and the zoning board of appeals, and every one of those stops is an opportunity for your project to be derailed, uh, that creates a, a you know a unintentionally hostile environment for business. Right. And that's something that we have to address by reducing layers of government and making government more efficient. Well, and then of course we talk about shared services through our municipalities, and one of the things that has come up, and I know I have been uh, involved in this firsthand. I have met personally with Chief Myers in Fredonia. I have met with Chief Ortolano. Chief Ortolano has boxes of files in his office where, and many times it's come up to have a shared safety campus mm -hmm. with not consolidating the police departments, but to mm -hmm. share a safety campus, a building, a facility, a state-of-the-art facility where both office, both departments can work out of, where we've got the Fredonia uh, police also, the campus police. We have our fire departments that are scattered. We have our, our court systems that are scattered. And there's, there, we continuously, we talk about this mile versus a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the problems. Have you done anything in this area? Are you concerned about this? Is this something that's on the forefront? Yeah, in fact, um, going back to the MCEC application, that was one of the 14 projects we submitted was to create a joint um, uh, safety facility, police and sa you know uh, courts, uh, fire and police uh, for Dunkirk and Fredonia to be combined into one facility. Uh, and uh, that was a, a project I, I think that would be extremely worthwhile. You know, there's so many issues. Uh, I think everyone understands that the, the Dunkirk Police Department uh, being housed inside City Hall has a lot of challenges um, and uh, it needs a lot of updates. Uh, in Fredonia, the same thing. They, you know, they're in the basement of the Opera House uh, and uh, the, fac the facility's aging. They've run out of space, particularly for the new requirements uh, for keeping evidence long term. Uh, and uh, they have to have their cars running uh, in, in the wintertime outside because, you know, if there's an emergency, you can't uh, brush off a car because they have no indoor, right. uh, you know, garage to house those vehicles. So there's a lot of challenges. And ultimately, uh, I, we were able to get some agreements between Dunkirk and Fredonia to put in this application. And, and had we, you know, been funded, uh, that would have created, uh, you know, a, a, an opportune time to try and put those two, uh, again, not merging the two departments, but putting them in the same facility. And there are so many other great things that would come along with that. Just the, the shared information that would go on, the idea of the police officers, you know, sharing the same locker rooms and, and, and break right. room and being able to collaborate much easier, um, you know, sharing uh, administration, you know, uh, all those things, you know, the, uh, you know, a shared booking facility, um, having the courts right there conveniently located um, so a lot of a lot of great um, opportunity there to save money and to have better policing and better uh, swifter uh, justice system in, in in the north county uh, unfortunately that did not get funded but we are still pursuing opportunities to try and get that so, so we so we can we're not ready to uh Cross that off our list, No, right? it's not crossed off the list. <laughs> that's, that's good because we need that. We yeah. need a shared Everybody needs a shared facility. Yes. I mean, the Fredonia facility has been referred to as deplorable. Yes. And the Dunkirk facility certainly, although we've done many upgrades of recent, uh, within the last several months, but still there, we need more space. When we talk about our policing, we talk about our safety, we talk about our community, one of the things that continues to come up is the opioid crisis. Yes. And this is huge. We, the uh, uh, situation uh, here in the North County is really dire. And we have, uh, the mayor has been very, very involved in this. I know there was a meeting where he met with the commissioner of uh, Oasis. Mm -hmm. I think you were there. I think mm -hmm. Senator uh, Young was there. Mm -hmm. There were all these uh, individuals there. We talked about the different things that we need to do. And you have a plan in place. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Um, in January this year, when I first took office as county executive, um, 
I uh, impaneled something called the Countywide Alliance for Enforcement and Rehabilitation, uh, CARE for short, C-A-E-R. And this was a broad spectrum of stakeholders, uh, from law enforcement to district attorney's office, uh, people that are involved in health care, uh, people that are involved in treatment and rehabilitation, peer support groups. Um, all those folks that are involved in the opioid crisis and in the, in the, you know, the drug epidemic in general, um, and brought them all together. In, at, we started with three different groups, uh, and then we eventually moved to two groups. But the idea was we wanted these people to share information and to develop uh, some uh, best practices and also to make recommendations on how we can improve situations. You know, we have a limited amount of resources, especially here in this, in this county. And we had a lot of duplication going on and not enough communication. So the purpose of the, of the CARE task force was to start collaboration, better communication, and then uh, in the end, create some, um, uh, some recommendations uh, to me and other municipal leaders as to how we can uh, address this more efficiently. And I'm, I'm happy to say that we, we had some, some success already. First and foremost, at our very first meetings, we had um, groups talking and sharing information the, you know, the biggest issues are obviously prevention and education, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course you had law enforcement and then treatment and re rehabilitation. And working together, uh, all those groups that were working within each, each one of those subcategories, you know, in general we're not communicating. So we increased the amount of communication, which uh, really helped uh, do things more efficiently. And we also started gathering better data. Uh, one of the things we, we really suffered from was not really knowing uh, for sure what was going on. So we worked with our epidemiologist, uh, Brianne Agate, in the county, and with the, the leadership of, of, the, of the Health and Human Services Department, we were able to get our arms around the data better. And what we found is, first of all, is um, you know, in 2018, we are going to see a dramatic, it looks like we're going to see a dramatic drop uh, in opioid deaths in Chautauqua County, mm -hmm. uh, as much as 65 percent, and also in you know drug-related deaths. There's a there's an overdose deaths and there's drug-related deaths. Both of them are going to see an, uh, looking like we're probably a 50 to 60 percent decline. Uh, and secondly, um, we have now come out with some very um, comprehensive recommendations uh, that include um, merging our two drug task forces and specifically. Uh, speaking of the gap that is in the Dunkirk Fredonia area when it comes to uh, you know being able to address uh, drug related crime uh, and so and how we can address that is uh, if we cannot merge both task forces then we do need to have um, uh, a change in, in how this is being handled so that um, drug crimes in the Dunkirk Fredonia area can be better more efficiently uh, addressed. So that's one of the many recommendations that the task force has come forward with. Uh, and um, I'm very happy and proud that we have this group that was worked so well together in a very short yeah. period of time. Right. And um, you know, we're gonna move forward with these. Some of these things are uh, going to be disruptive for some people. Uh, some of them are gonna, uh, are gonna shake the, uh, you know, the, 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 the status quo, but we have to do that uh, if we want to address this. Yeah. So we've had some, some limited success and now we're gonna move forward with hopefully uh, a quantum leap forward in improving the situation. I think that's good, and I think we really do need to to uh, do something certainly uh, throughout because it's just it's you know it's hurting our young people yes. and it's hurting our our uh, children. Obviously, this that's yeah. a that's an issue. It's an economic development issue as well. Right. Uh, I think people have to look at this as you know you have to understand that um, it's not it, it, there's a huge human uh, cost to this a huge human toll, but when you start talking about um, wanting people to move here, move here because we have a, a workforce issue here, uh, raise their families here, uh, vacation here, uh, whatever it is, having a quality of life that's impacted negatively by this drug epidemic is a hindrance to our economic development. Well, and we talk about economic development, and certainly that's a cornerstone. We need to have more. We need to bring more in. We've recently here in Dunkirk, I know that you've worked very uh, closely with Mayor Rosas with our cold storage warehouse mm -hmm. that's going in on Roberts Road. That's almost, that looks like it's really, really moving. I've yeah. been watching the uh, progress there. So uh, that's something that you have worked on, that you've been very, that your IDA, has, the CCIDA has, mm -hmm. has worked hand in hand with our development department mm -hmm. on. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the progress there. Yeah, well, first of all, it was a wonderful collaborative effort to bring this about. Um, you know, and, and I think that um, it's also going to help uh, expand that Roberts Road area a, as an industrial park. Um, you know, we're in a really great strategic location here um, when it comes to transportation. Uh, you know, first of all, this is a part of 
uh, my initiative to shift the idea toward how do we support the businesses that are here first? How do we ensure that they can be healthy and strong and grow? Um, it's not about bringing new businesses here as much as it is supporting the businesses that are here. And this is a this cold storage facility is a great step in that direction. Right, because of Philbrook Foods. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Be, you know, Philbrook Foods has been uh, has expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had over a hundred uh, employees hired last year, I believe it was. And now with the cold storage warehouse, there'll be more employees, and they'll be able to continue to expand. Or their lines. Yeah, well, and you know, as is the case with most business now, um, they are a part of a much larger organization. It's based in Chicago, <clears throat> and they have 10 plants, uh, I believe, throughout the nation. And when they look to develop a new product or to expand their business somewhere, uh, they have to look at places that are capable of handling expansion. And they were pretty much maxed out at their space there. So, um, And when business starts to contract as the economy changes and they have to look toward places, where are their strengths? Mm -hmm. uh, we want Dunkirk's plant to be one of their big strengths. And in order to do that, they need to have more uh, ability to store things close by, which is what this cold storage facility does. So this cold storage facility, on top of it itself being a new business that's going to hopefully attract other businesses like it uh, for storage uh, and transportation, it's also a key component in ensuring the long-term success of Fieldbrook Foods. You know, that that's great. We, we talk about, about keeping businesses here, and of course we're yes. losing NRG. We know that that's a given. Mm -hmm. I know that there have been meetings uh, with the state, at the state level, at the county level, the city level, mm -hmm. all, all around, trying to think of ways, what we, can we do? Mm -hmm. uh, we're, are we looking for a new uh, power plant to come in? Are mm -hmm. we looking at repurposing that? You've been very involved in that. Tell me a little bit about the status of, of those talks. A few different things are going on there. Um, first of all, the mayor and I had uh, a meeting uh, a couple months ago uh, here in Dunkirk uh, with the Appalachian Regional Commission, also known as ARC. Uh, and uh, they were very impressed with, number one, our ability to collaborate and, our, uh, and the ideas that we had for that facility. So they have granted us uh, money uh, to do a, a comprehensive strategy and study of what we can do with that plant. Um, we're looking to uh, get that money matched uh, with some other state organizations uh, to hopefully expand that. Um, and what it comes down to is this. We're have to, going to have to have a plan A, a plan B, and, and so on. Plan A would be to get someone else in there to generate electricity. I think the most successful way we could get that done is by looking at the concept of creating a microgrid. Uh, a microgrid is, uh, the, the, the energy plant previously was a plant that generated electricity that went right into the grid and into the open market, uh, which is fine, you need that. But it also creates some um, issues with oversupply and competition and everything else, uh, which is why you know we had such a struggle uh, to, to get it repowered. If we create a microgrid, the purpose of that is to generate electricity there for the purposes of supplying the local area uh, and supplying it at a low cost. Uh, so it, number one, it would help with economic development, but also uh, you're not talking about just putting electricity into the grid uh, and then creating those issues with, with, with competition and supply. Instead, we would do something somewhat similar to what the, the BPU does, the Board of Public Utilities in Jamestown, where they're supplying low-cost energy uh, to a specific geographic area, and, that, uh, is, and only excess electricity would go into the grid to be sold. I think a microgrid is the best opportunity that we have to repower that plant, and that, to me, is plan A. And then so, plan. You know, <laughs> so, do you think that's going to be feasible? Uh, the study will help ferret that out, and um, uh, I, I, we've had some conversations. Senator Young has had uh, several conversations uh, with people at high levels at other uh, other uh, energy producing companies that have showed some interest. So, I think that's you know it's feasible. Um, you know, it, we have a long road to go before we can get there, certainly. But to me, that would be Plan A. Uh, plan B would be to look at how we could potentially repurpose that plant. Uh, you know, if we cannot get uh, someone there to generate electricity, you know, what else can be done there? Uh, I think there's a number of uh, interesting ideas out there, including turning it into some kind of a uh, mixed-use facility with a residential. Uh, you know, take down those smokestacks, uh, rehab that building, turn it into a uh, uh, a residential and commercial uh, facility, uh, clean up the area, which is going to be a, a huge task. Well, um, and of course, it's already been uh, part of our uh, brownfield 
uh, yes. plans to the BOA, so it is a part of the BOA plan. Yes, and, it's, and there's, there's going to be an extensive amount of cleanup there in order to make it um, suitable for a residential facility. Okay. Sure. Uh, but there are some good things there infrastructure-wise. I personally believe if we can't re repower that plant, that um, you know, you look at the the skyline of Dunkirk, and and um, you know, a power plant is not something that's really uh, you right. know uh, something that people <laughs> want to look at, right? So right. if we can re if we can repurpose that plant, take down the smokestacks, make it into something that's attractive, that is going to help. Um, the entire waterfront. Uh, it's going to create a, a better, a more aesthetically pleasing uh, view. It's going to create opportunities for more recreation, for potentially uh, a lot more commercial tourism related businesses, and it's going to improve property values. And we, we talk about tourists, we're, we're really cutting short on time, but I want to talk mm -hmm. briefly sure. about our waterfront, our summer activities, our festivals, our boat race, of which you were a major part of. Give me just a quick what did the county do for us? How did how did that how did that affect? I know it affected yeah. our bed tax positively. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about that. Sure. Well, we were happy to be a partner uh, the, uh, between the bed tax and uh, as far as a reserve fund for the bed tax, which we had a special allocation to help fund uh, the uh, the boat race, along with the support of the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency. Uh, we put in $40,000 uh, of money from, from, from county sources. In addition to that, we also had uh, carts here to help with transportation. Uh, and I thought the boat race was, uh, you know, was certainly uh, drew a lot of people to Dunkirk. Uh, it, it, it showed us in a national spotlight very positively, and um, I'm hopeful that uh, we can look at next year and see what the opportunity is to do that again. Right, and I think that our motel and hotel owners and our businesses will be happy to have that. Sure, absolutely. County Executive Barillo, thank you so much. We could go on for another 30 minutes, <laughs> and, and, you know, this has just been a wonderful um, conversation. Thank you. Please come back again. I know there's more to more to talk about that we yes. didn't get to. Sure. So thank you. And for those of you who are watching City Speaks, watch us daily on Spectrum 1301 in Dunkirk at 3 and 10. Email us at uh, dunkirkaccess.com. You can watch it on YouTube. Email me, vwesling at cityofdunkirk.com. And thank you on behalf of Mayor Rosas and his team and County Executive Borello. Thank you so much.